Good morning. And welcome to worship at Meadowbrook Congregational Church this fourth Sunday of Easter. I'm Pastor Joel Boyd, and I'm blessed to serve this church and its members and friends. I'd like to extend a special welcome to any visitors joining us here in person or friends joining us online. We're glad to have you with us. If you haven't already done so, go ahead and mark your calendar for the summer, the week of July 18th through the, thir- uh, the 20th. We'll be having our Vacation Bible School. Uh, It'll be a midweek program, and it'll be called Pets Unleashed. So at the end of the week, on the Sunday, uh, we'll also be doing an animal blessing. So look for more info for that to come up soon. We are looking for folks to volunteer to help out, age high school and up, uh, to help lead the events. And also, if you'd like to sign up or sign up your child or grandchild, Uh, To register to attend, you may do so. We have a link uh, which can be found in your weekly email, or you can scan the QR code in uh, the announcement we have in the uh, fellowship hall. Well, friends, many members and friends of Meadowbrook have expressed interest in kind of re-upping the uh, traditional greeting time that we've had at the start of worship service on Sunday mornings. Uh, This goes back to before the pandemic, Uh, We know that feels like a long time. Uh, So typically this had been done uh, in between spoken announcements and uh, between our, and then our choral introit and the start of our service. So we'll uh, include this greeting starting today in a few moments. And also due to overwhelming interest in and affection for the hymn, Let There Be Peace on Earth. Well, this favorite of the congregations will be included monthly on the final Sunday of each month, and perhaps occasionally earlier that month, uh, depending on on what is going on on that particular week. So look for those uh, each month. And thank you very much to everyone who came out this week and yesterday uh, to help out with our spring cleanup outside. Uh, So many trucks, many hands helping, uh, getting rid of some brush, some branches, uh, pulling weeds, Uh, You are appreciated. Uh, Thank you for helping keep our church beautiful, inside and outside. Scheduling is underway for our blood drive, which will be on Tuesday, May 9th, from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. in our fellowship hall. To schedule an appointment, uh, you can go online to redcrossblood.org and enter the sponsor code Meadowbrook, or you can see Cal Riddell with any questions about that. Well, immediately following worship this morning, friends, we are blessed to welcome a guest speaker from Leave a Legacy, Steve Moore, uh, who will be with us to talk about deferred giving or planned giving. Uh, This is a free educational seminar sponsored by our stewardship ministry team. The seminar will be offered in person after service in the hall, but also available via Zoom If you want to join us online, for anyone who is joining us online this morning, you may find uh, the Zoom link, uh, which is in our weekly email or uh, on uh, on our webpage as well, I think, in our Facebook page. And it will also be recorded so it can be shared at a later date. Well, friends, may the peace of the Lord be with you. And in person, friends, Feel free to shake hands, to fist bump, or to hug as you feel comfortable. And online worshipers may greet one another by posting a greeting in the comments. Let us now take a time to share the Christ peace with one another.
friends, we can still do it. That's cool. Let us now take a time to prepare our hearts and our minds for the worship of our Lord. Please stand for the call to worship. The Lord is a stronghold for the oppressed. A stronghold in, in times of trouble. Please join me in the invocation and the Lord's Prayer. Lord Jesus, teach us how no one person 
is greater than another, but that we are called to humble ourselves as his followers. When he said, for those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Bless us by your presence, O oh God, and give us courage to be your people. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right. Good morning. What is your favorite food to eat for breakfast? Cereal. Pop-Tarts. Augie, do you want one? You thinking? Sweetie? Tiny? Do you want one? You like? Uh, toast, lightly buttered. <laughs> Very good, Aggie. Bagels. Bagels. Hey, we have bagels today. All right. I noticed that none of you said fish. Yeah. <laughs> I will eat it for dinner. Me too. I only eat it for dinner. Even lunch sounds a little iffy sometimes. Okay. She does. You guys give all kinds of secrets. Okay. Well, in today's story that we're going to read in, in Sunday school, Jesus makes his friends, the disciples, breakfast on the beach. So, this is the third story in a row that we have learned about that takes place after Easter, where Jesus... You know this story? Oh, no. Well, that's okay. We have a fun craft project, so that's good. Okay, so the disciples were all very happy that Jesus had been raised from the dead, and they had seen him a few times since he had been resurrected. And in this story, Jesus is going to tell them what he wants them to do when he goes back to heaven with God. All right? But I wanted to read one, one little thing. This, all three stories that we've learned about in the last three weeks have come from the book of John. And they're in the 20th and the 21st chapter. And I just love this little line, so I'm going to share it with you. It says after these stories. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. Isn't that funny? And then there's one other one. Let's see if I can find it. I know. And then it says, the last line, but there are also many other things that Jesus did. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. I know. That means we can have Sunday school stories forever. So, all right. Ben is going to read. Dear God, thank you for the gift of Jesus who offers us your love, mercy, and care so that we can then share your love, mercy, and care with others. Thank you and amen. <laughs> Thank you. 
This morning's scripture reading is 1 Samuel 17, verses 31 through 37, and may be found in your pew Bible in the Old Testament on page 261. When the words that David spoke were heard, they repeated them before Saul, and he sent for them. David said to Saul, let no one's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Saul said to David, you are not able to go against the Philistine to fight with him, for you are just a boy and he has been a warrior from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant used to keep sheep for his father. And whenever a lion or a bear came and took a lamb from the, pl the flock, I went after it and struck it down, rescuing the lamb from its mouth. And if it turned against me, I would catch it by the jaw, strike it down, and kill it. Your servant has killed both lions and bears, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them, since he has defied the armies of the living God. David said, The Lord who saved me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will save me from the hand of this Philistine. So Saul said to David, Go, and may the Lord be with you. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. 
Friends, let us now take a time to raise the prayers of our innermost hearts to the Lord as we pray in the time of silence. giving God. Lord, you bless your people with more gifts than we know what to do with. You bring loving people into our lives and send us to share that love to others. Lord, hear our prayers and bless us in all of our needs. We pray for the family of Tom Dewey as he passed to his eternal rest on April 1st. We pray for Mary Crockett and her family as Mary has now been moved to the memory care unit at Fox Room. We pray for Don Gaines as he is now home following a recent hospital stay for an infection. Lord, we pray for all churches in CMAC, our sister churches in the Southeastern Association, following our annual meeting where we gathered together this past week. Lord, we pray for Alicia Smith Kirk, friend and longtime mentee of Peggy Wright, as she has been diagnosed with a breast cancer that has metastasized and also with bone cancer. Lord God, we pray for Sam Shinazaki and his family as his wife Lucy passed to her eternal rest on March 12th. We pray for the people of Sudan as they live through a time of unrest and violence. Lord, we pray for Vicki and Dave Wanakot as Vicki faces an ongoing time of health challenges, Lord. We continue to pray that all may be healthy and safe from COVID and other illness. And Lord, we pray that the war in Ukraine may come to an end and that all your people may be safe. Lord, we give thanks for and wish happy birthdays to David Gasser, Barbara Vanderhoff, David Scheller, and Rich Mzirkowitz, who all celebrated this last week. And we wish a happy anniversary to Rich and Betsy Mazurkowitz, who celebrated this week, and to Joyce and Jim Paxton, who celebrate tomorrow. We raise all these prayers to you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, the offering for the work of this church will now be received.
Let us pray. Loving God, you bless us to be your people in the world, to share your love with all the people we meet. Lord, bless these, our gifts, that they may be used to further your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, amen. You may be seated. And the Lord God, open our hearts and our minds as we witness to the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 13. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. This is the gospel message of our Savior. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. our series on expectations, we first talked about the expectations Jesus had and has for those who follow him. In giving us the two great commandments that inform the rest, Jesus calls on us to love God with everything we've got and to love one another sacrificially, stretching way out beyond our own comfort zone. Last week, we considered God's expectations of us. One area we focused on explored how God calls on us to remain open, to be vulnerable to and for one another. This is especially important to us as a church, as we seek to grow in welcoming families and individuals to our congregation, and also to grow our impact with partners in our community. And finally today, we look at what our expectations are of one another. And for that, we'll go to the Gospel of John. And see how Jesus talks about sacrifice and friendship as we see them in the earliest church. But first, first let's sit ringside at a heavyweight boxing championship match. Having suffered a loss to Max Schmeling before, Joan Lewis knew what it would take to win in the rematch held at Yankee Stadium in 1938. I don't think many people were here <laughs> that day. Not that he needed any additional pressure as a professional black American athlete in the 1930s, but since the Nazis had taken power by then in Germany, hope and expectations ran real high for Lewis to win. Boxing is a physically demanding sport which calls on you to give it your all in training, in your personal life, and where it counts most, in the ring. With the threat of war rising, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt spoke with Lewis during a White, House, a White House visit to impress upon him 
the importance of his winning this fight, this rematch. Who could have dealt with such pressure? The president and Nazis aside, Joe Lewis also had the expectations of black Americans to contend with. Every time Lewis won a match, the black community would literally run out into the street and cheer and cry with joy. Harlem Renaissance poet Langston Hughes actually writes about how he also went out into the street and just cried about this. On June 22nd, 1938, in perhaps one of the most important sporting events in American history, Joe Lewis brought all he had into the ring with that rematch against Max Schmeling. Just two minutes, four seconds, and three knockdowns later, the towel was thrown in, the fight was stopped, and Joe Lewis was victorious. While boxing, boxing ha, has had more broadly popular support all the way up through the 1990s, because I remember watching pay-per-view of Evander Holyfield, <laughs> you'd pay all that money and the fight was over in two seconds. Remember that? In recent years, right, its fan base has, has a bit waned, right? likely due to the natural violence, which is just part of the sport itself. Joe Lewis is often on the mind of any one of us in Metro Detroit, as Lewis had lived in Detroit's Black Bottom neighborhood after moving from his native Alabama to flee the threat with his family of the local KKK there. That's why he moved to Detroit. There's no doubt that Lewis was a champion, be it in title, name, or legends. Sure, he lost a few matches, just three out of 69, though. But when we really look close at what Joe Lewis accomplished, it's almost as if all those matches weren't really the most important. Imperfect as we are, as people, all of us, Lewis stood up to the challenges that were before him. And he fought with all he had. The expectations the American people placed on Lewis were outlandish by any standard. But he kept going anyway. Friends, this morning's passage from the Gospel of John is just one verse. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. Jesus says this to his followers, right? That's who he's speaking to. And at first glance, it sounds pretty straightforward, right? As if to say that, you know, dying for a friend is the highest form of love. Yet while it may immediately suggest this interpretation, it's also possible that others exist alongside it, that there can be more than one way for this to be true. Jesus says some interesting stuff to help us before and after this little verse. He says that he commands his followers to love one another sacrificially in the same way he has loved them. Jesus also says that since they know more about him and they're more connected to him as followers, well, they're no longer considered servants to him, but as friends. 
In so doing, Jesus speaks to this earliest church as well as to us today. Saying that we are called to reach out and teach one another about him as well as to love one another sacrificially. But since he doesn't stop there with those already in the faith and elsewhere in the Gospels, charges us to spread his love to everyone, what we might see in this, in this verse 13, a calling, a calling to live sacrificially towards everyone as they are all potentially friends in the faith. This then broadens our understanding of what we expect of one another from only inside, you know, our church buildings, our meeting house walls, to also way outside into the community. To sum it up, we might say that this passage is about both our laying down our own needs and desires to benefit one another in the church family and about doing the same for those in the community. While we might have high expectations of one another in all we do to keep the church going, including its many ministries and its grounds, its building, all the different things we need. Well, this passage actually expands our expectations to include reaching out to our community, all of whom are potential new friends. No doubt Joe Lewis had to give it everything he had to win that high-pressure rematch against Max Schmeling. But you might suggest that this match wasn't the most important victory. <clears throat> Lewis's win was a victory for the American spirit in a time of looming war. It was also a victory for the black American community who celebrated joyously with Lewis and all this meant and all this could mean. The expectations on him were tremendous. It's a good thing he didn't have a cell phone back then. To hear about it all the time would be overwhelming. The expectations were really high, and yet Lewis was able to maintain focus on what he had to do. Perhaps what only he could do. Jesus shows us that it's not just about helping our current friends, but also about making sacrifices for our community, for the world. We might even say, for his kingdom. So what have we been expecting of one another in the church? Many have done so much over decades. And they have done it faithfully and well with humility. And yet we have lived through a global pandemic and times have changed considerably. Technology has changed. The needs of the people in our community have changed. Even the people who are in the community have changed. So what do we expect from one another now in today's world? What might we be called to give up or let go of in order to have the resources we need to reach our community? What might we be called to add or adapt or change in order to reach them the most effectively for us to be the most relevant? 
How might this all show our love for God and for all God's people? How vulnerable do we need to be to and for others in order for them to be truly welcome? Friends, there are so many things and people in the world trying to monopolize our time, our money, our talents, our hearts. They expect to rule us, to occupy that space in our mind, in our body, in our soul. And if we let that happen, it will happen. But we are a gathered people of faith and a God that never quits. It's not all about winning or success or declaring ourselves to be the champion, the victor. We may worry about what to expect of each other or about what will happen to us, our families, our church. As we see the victory of Joe Lewis and in the empty tomb of Jesus Christ, love is the the true undefeated champion. And so may we raise our hopes, raise our dreams, and raise our expectations high to the Lord God that we love through it all. Amen. Please rise in body or spirit and join in singing our sending hymn, 308, Let There Be Peace on Earth. Friends, may Almighty God bless you, hold you close, remind you of your great strength and courage, and guide your steps as you share the love of Jesus. Amen.